there, greetings, and welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph. I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. So, uh, well, Tuesday nights, we normally do a show called Metal. Well, actually, we normally alternate between what's new and metal. And it's Metal's turn this week, so we'll be doing Metal. So what is Metal about? Well, Metal is a discussion about either a older progressive rock band that came out 10 years or more ago, or a newer progressive rock band which came out, well, progressive metal band, sorry. Progressive metal band that came out... Um, in the last 10 years. So tonight it's the older version. We're doing Fate's Warning, one of the three bands along with Queen's Reich and Dream Theater that are credited with um, bringing progressive metal to a genre, I guess. I guess so now it's considered a genre and they were the first three bands and we are doing Fate's Warning, uh, which I think is the oldest of the three bands, but I could be wrong here. Maybe Queen's Reich is. I'm not sure which one. Anyways, um, I'll tell you a little bit about the band first, and then we'll discuss a little bit of their history, and then I'll talk a little bit about their music and their albums. Okay, so they formed in 1982 and were formed by vocalist John Arch, guitarist Jim Matheos, uh, Victor Ardi- Ardunini, Ardunini, I think that's what it's pronounced that, bassist Joe DiBiase, and drummer Steve Zimmerman. Um, There's been quite a few lineup changes with this band over the 41 years of their existence and it's not really that hard to grasp because bands don't tend to stay together for that long of a period. Um, They're considered, like I said, one of the pioneers of progressive metal with along with Queensryche and Dream Theater. Um, They've had three albums make the top 200 on the billboard. the first person to be replaced in this was Ardine Ardunini. He was uh, let go and replaced by Frank Estera, Est- Aresti. Aresti, that's it. On the third album, Awaken the Guardian. And then uh, their first album to make, that was also their first album to make the top 200. So they've had three on it, three albums. And we're going to talk some what about the albums now. So uh, the first album, Night at the Broken, is uh, was released on Metal Blade as well. Uh, very influenced by Iron Maiden. Well, I don't know if they were influenced by Iron Maiden, but they sound. This album sounds like an Iron Maiden album. A lot of very similar sounds here. Even the vocals are very Maiden-like. Uh, but the album is very clear sounding. Um, lots of heavy riffs. Lots of heavy Maiden-like sounds here. So if you if you are looking just to listen to progressive metal. That's an album you might want to pass on. So, uh, the next album, the Spectre, Spectre Within, is actually the first kind of progressive rock album for them. Very heavy rifting, lots of of, of that metal-like sounds for their atmosphere. Much more progressive than the original opening album. Um, it's got a really kind of a heavy sound, and it's more progress progressive. Uh, towards the end of the album too I found the lyrics are very sci-fi like as well which really helps with that progressive sound so the uh, third album which is Awaken the Guardian is actually the first one to get them some notoriety it made the billboard top 200 I think it was like 197 or something I can't remember uh, they use uh, they use very acoustic sounding guitars at the, in a lot of the tracks here at the beginning but I don't think they're actually acoustic I think he's just toned it down and is picking them like an acoustic guitar and that's you know you've got uh, time long past the, the guardian and the sorceress all have that kind of sound in their music uh, the song I liked the best was Exodus very catchy rifting song really good um, the album has a giant frog like Guardian on it. Actually, very reminiscent to uh, um, The Guardian of Forever on Star Trek. Yeah. Go watch that and then look at the album and tell me if it's the same. Some very good guitar rifting on this and some solos as well. Uh, The next album is No Exit. This is the biggest album to date. This is their, I think it finished, it, it made like 110th or something like that on the charts. It's on there for like 14 or 15 weeks. 
Uh, this is the also the first album with Ray Alder. He took over vocals from uh, John. Um, yeah, John was replaced by him. Uh, this is a more methodical, but a more more meth more methodical, slower paced, complex album than its predecessors. Um, and they did have a couple. Uh, the Silent Cry, which was a video. A very metal band. It looked like they look like a very metal band, but they have that progressive sound to them. Um, <coughs> this is also the first kind of suite that they do. A suite being a long song. I think the last track on the album, the gates, the ivory, a very gate of dream, the very gate of dreams. I'm having a real hard time speaking tonight. I do apologize. I was sick most of the day, so. My brain isn't 100% functional today. 22-minute uh, long suite uh, with, uh, I think it has uh, 12 tracks on it. I think there's 12 tracks on this. 12 sets, whatever you want to call it. Uh, pretty, pretty impressive display of progressive rock here, even though it's metal. So uh, the third album, Perfect Symmetry, is an album that I do own. In fact... I can see it. I'll pull it down. This one. This is the album that I bought first by them. Fate's Warning. Really good album. Lots of progressive stuff on this. Very kind of methodical, melodical. Uh, lots of uh, uh, acoustic sounding bits in it as well. It, it, very complex rifting. As the same as the No Exit album. This album actually didn't do as well on the charts. However, I think overall it's probably the better of the two albums. So then we're going to do a, just a little bit on the last half dozen or so albums. Uh, Parallels was next out. This was distributed by Warner Records as opposed to Metal Edge. Uh, the bass is a little bit more prominent. I found it a little more prominent on this album for some reason. I don't know. Maybe the album is just clearer sounding and that's possibly what it is. Um, album's a little more mainstream as well so they've, they've gone from this more heavy less mainstream to progressive metal but more main sounding more mainstream more acceptable to the masses i guess uh the next album out inside out is continues with that commercial sound progressive sound pretty good solid album as well as the uh next one which is pleasant shades of gray uh this is a long progressive metal song. I think this is the album with the one song on it. It's one song with 12 different parts. Really complex changes. I like it a lot. Sorry, my uh, my portable light here, which I'm using to offset the ceiling lights, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, and I had to do it today because I wasn't feeling well, so I didn't get to do this during the daylight hours, which is what I had originally planned to do. I was going to do it right after work, but, you know, you can't do... If your body doesn't want to work and your brain doesn't want to work, you can't force them. So then they had a live album called Still Life, and another one a few years later, like maybe five years later, called uh, Live in Athens. I think they've had four overall. I, mean, I could be wrong, but I think there's four overall. The next album that was released as a studio album, their ninth studio album, was Disconnected. Uh, melodic and complex. Actually not much different than the predecessors, except for not maybe as commercial sounding. Um, then they had their final three albums, Darkness and A Different Light. These three albums came out much later in their career. Uh, this album is... Uh, has a, some of the faster parts and there's almost some speed metal sounds to it and not every song but some of the songs have it um, yeah and the the song Firefly which had an accompany video also gave me that kind of emotional feel that you get from a lot of uh, more modern metal sounds it's almost like they're like heavy ballads I guess I, I don't know how to describe it they're they're not ballads by any stretch of the word, but they, they have all that emotion in them and just makes you feel that kind of a, a ballad-like feel to it, even though it's a pretty heavy song. Uh, the same with Theories of Flight, which is, uh, which is the uh, 12th studio album. 
Uh, they use some noises on this album, and there's some more subdued parts. The tracks are more, there are some speed metal tracks on this as well. So that, they seem to have incorporated a little bit of that in their later music. Um, and then The Long Day and Good Night is less progressive and less um, heavy than the predecessor, the two predecessing albums here. And, but it's very similar, but just less of it, you know. So overall, they are a solid band with lots of really good music. Um, I don't love every song on every album, of course, because there isn't a band like that. Even Rush doesn't do that for me. But they do have enough good stuff on almost all their albums, especially their earlier albums. I'd say their first, right up to Parallels. So about their first six albums have some really solid stuff on just about every album. The albums after that, it's a hit and miss. There's some stuff I really like and some I'm not really crazy about. But overall, this is a solid progressive metal band uh, throughout most of their career and are still making good stuff and still tour and considered one of the great bands of uh, their time period and uh, one of the founding kind of um, the one of the founding kind of metal bands for progressive metal. Sorry, I got a little bit tongue-tied there. And I'm starting to get a headache again, which isn't helping this whole situation. But overall, I just wanted to say that I do like this band quite a bit. They're worth exploring their discography. Even if you don't want to buy them, you can listen to them and pick the ones out you do like. I do like this one quite a bit, Bates Warning. Uh, Perfect Symmetry. I like uh, the. I do like the first album quite a bit, even though it's not really progressive. Very Iron Maiden-ish, so I'm naturally going to be drawn to that. But the next, uh, The Guardian and the No Exit album, both really solid as well. So there you have it. Tonight's uh, band for metal, Fate's Warning. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. So much appreciated. Any comments about this band or any uh, anything to say about them overall, just let me know. Put it in the comments section below. And we'll be back next week with What's New and then the following week with another metal band. So take care and we will see you then. Bye.